Martin, appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome, everybody. I'm delighted to be here for uh, the celebration of Elko's 25th anniversary. Um, so, you know, firstly, what I wanted to do is thank Elko for the partnership that we've had with them, which has been over 20 years. So a significant partnership in terms of the role and the collaboration that we've had together. If I think back of where I'm from and uh, where we now have a manufacturing campus, um, you know, we, we saw from Elko what it looked like here and the economic environment in, in uh, 1993. But if I go back to 1989, when Intel were considering, you know, where would they put a manufacturing facility in Europe? This is what the area just west of Dublin looked like. And um, it was a number of years later, in fact, 1993, when we actually established our first factory. But like Elko, if I fast forward to today, I'd like to show you what the campus looks like today. So, you know, significant change and investment. In fact, the largest private investment in the history of the state in terms of Ireland. So just to compare and contrast, I thought I'd share those couple of photographs. Um, in terms of the focus that we have as Intel, there's kind of four key pillars that uh, we're focused on as a company that underpin everything that we do. And the first one is automotive. Clearly, a lot of focus and a lot of investments that we've made to address that particular marketplace. Uh, 5G, and we've seen where we've tested and actually um, trialed that environment at the Olympic Games uh, recently, is another critical aspect to the connectivity required to actually drive the network. We're seeing huge uh, uptick in the area of artificial intelligence and the role that the data center has to play in that. And then the whole virtual world, and you know, you get to experience it in the different gaming environment that we, ha we can see here today. So they're the kind of critical aspects and critical areas for Intel. And I mentioned a minute ago, and today is very much all about experiences, but we were very much driving experiences and assisting through technology uh, at the, Olympic, the recent Olympic Games. So if I think about, you know, you know, what the company was founded on, and Gordon Moore and Moore's Law, and where that has brought us over that particular journey. Um, you know, if we look back to the technology over the last 20 years, um, and, and just put it in context, the particular technology that we're using was around 90 nanometers, which is smaller than the flu bug. So, you know, very significant in terms of size and scale. Um, you know, one of the statistics about our factories are that the factory is 10,000 times cleaner inside the fab than an operating theater. So, you know, significantly, you know, we need a significant clean environment to be able to do the work that we do. So just fast forwarding through some of the technology nodes that we've done and looking at 32 nanometer and looking at, you know, that in comparison to the, the polio virus. Um, and where today the majority of our business is in 14 nanometer, and that's what the factory in Ireland that I showed you earlier is producing today. We're right now making the transition to 10, and there's a path to 7 and 5. So it's a very interesting time in terms of driving our business and the acceleration of that business. So in terms of you know, what we do and how we, how we deliver to the market, um, we basically have technology to address the market right from the edge devices to the data center and everything in between. That's underpinned then with memory, with connectivity, and with software to enable and drive the whole market. But I thought what would be interesting is to take a look at our personal journey in Intel over the last 25 years. And if we go back to 1993, that's actually when we launched the first Pentium processor. Um, so, you know, a very significant milestone in terms of a product that would be very recognized in the marketplace. We then transitioned uh, a number of years later to the Pentium 2 and added MMX capabilities in terms of multimedia extensions and other capabilities. And I'd just take, like to take a flashback to an advert that we used in the Super Bowl in that year just to add a little bit of color to the presentation this morning. So I'll just play this video for you. 
the Pentium processor with Intel MMX technology gives you full sound, smooth video, and rich colors. So it's no wonder the technicians who add this technology walk with a little extra spring in their step. Well, you can So I think we've come a long way, even with our adverts since then, but I just thought I'd give you that quick flashback. Um, so looking at you know, where we went forward, uh, if we look at um, 1998, it was the first time that we'd introduced the Xeon product line in terms of Pentium 2 Xeon, which went on to be a very successful brand in its own right as Xeon for a whole server infrastructure until the very present day. Um, 1999, Pentium 3. Um, Pentium 4, along with the launch of Microsoft's XP operating system. Um, and then in 2003, we introduced Centrino. And Centrino was a very significant product development and product launch for us because we had embedded Wi-Fi in every single laptop when actually Wi-Fi wasn't per pervasive. It wasn't ubiquitous as we would know it today. And um, we were actually... In initially, we had to produce the first Wi-Fi access points to actually get deployed to enable people to take advantage of Wi-Fi. Now, we all take Wi-Fi for granted. We expect, we heard from Martin, people were having challenges because everybody's connecting and providing the passwords. We all just expect Wi-Fi to be everywhere we are uh, for our phones, for our laptops and tablets, and to be able to take advantage of it. But really, it was the Centrino technology and our investment and in looking ahead when that Wi-Fi infrastructure wasn't in place to actually bring about that market and drive that opportunity for what we take for granted today. So in 2008, we launched the Atom product, which actually allowed us to um, come into you know, phones and tablets and other technology and actually drive a new product value line for us. Um, and moving on then to what we have to present day today, a full line of core products and uh, we've just launched the, uh, recently the eighth generation of that particular uh, product line. Um, just two more on this slide. I mean, the highest end that we would have is the Extreme Edition Core i9, uh, which was launched at the, the end of last year. And as I said, in the Xeon line, a full product line from 1998 right to today and beyond in terms of what we're enabling for the data center and that, uh, that particular product portfolio. I think a significant change that we've made in the culture and what we do in our company is the fact that we have become data-centric. And uh, you know, that's absolutely by design in terms of the leadership of the company. But when you look at the different examples of the amount of data that's being created per day by individuals and by autonomous driving and various other um, me mechanisms, you can see that you know, no matter what chart or what technology you look at, there is significant um, uh, you know, data being, being created by individuals and by businesses and by infrastructure. And uh, you know, what, we, what we need to ensure is that we can take advantage of that data. And that's where the artificial intelligence comes in that I spoke about earlier in terms of being able to get the insights and enabling the business from what we're doing with that data. So we heard earlier in terms of you know, the history, but our, our own company celebrates its 50th anniversary later in July. And you know, this is one of our founders. And you know, his particular motto, or one of the ones that's well attributed to him, is you know, don't be encumbered by the past. Don't be encumbered by history. Go off and do something wonderful. So with that, I'd like to wish Elko and everybody well. I hope you have an excellent event, and I'd just like to leave you with a final video. Now I heard you go too fast and you'll melt. Electricity. I'm not putting lightning in my walls. I live flying to the birds. 
You know it mutates all the nutrients in your food. They have these little soaps there that I can't find anywhere else. Oh, my hands smell amazing. Do you really need to talk to people all the time? Soon, artificial intelligence will be able to flag a health issue before you even come for a checkup. Yeah, I don't need a machine to tell me how to live. Ooh, I'm gonna be late for a meeting. Intel is powering artificial intelligence that can help doctors save lives. Don't worry, we'll help you get there. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, indeed. Wonderful ad. I haven't seen that before. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's just looking backwards and forwards. Just marvelous. Just marvelous. Uh, well, the human perspective, uh, how, how do you personally uh, feel about this? Do you use uh, augmented reality stuff, smart watches, stuff like that? Do you enjoy that? Uh, personally, I am transitioning to the VR piece. But yeah, I'm using smart watches and other technology. I think we're all using smartphones to track what we do. I see that there's um, you know, various different sports activities here. We actually have uh, bicycles in the back. And I, I do a lot of cycling myself, and I would track it on the cycling apps. So yeah, absolutely, fully engaged in it. If we speak on, uh, on the world and the scale and, and the fields, which, well, business fields or the fields of professions from your perspective, will be the most disrupted in the positive meaning by technology we create here all together? I think the, the one that has the most opportunity, uh, and there are many, but the one for me that's passionate, uh, that I'm passionate about is the whole area of healthcare. I think there's a real opportunity to accelerate and improve people's lives by deploying the uh, technology in an appropriate manner. I think it's very important to still have the human interface and to have the human touch, but I think that we can do a lot more with predictive analytics and a lot more with technology to make sure that we're not using old manila folders at the end of patients' beds and that we have less human errors as a result of handwritten notes and that we have you know, uh, you know, the access to the appropriate patient data uh, at the bedside, for example. There is a sentence that the human who will live longer than 200 years most probably have been born already. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely possible. We're seeing more and more people live past 100 now. So, um, you know, who's to know? I mean, there's uh, a, lot better, a lot better information and insights with regard, with regard to nutrition and people's diets. And, you know, people who are taking the right path from the very start are certainly giving themselves every chance to live you know, well past 100, and who knows where, where it will go. Thank you. Thank you very much thank for a very, very insightful presentation. Thank Applause, you. ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Colin Macaulay, Intel.